fellow YouTuber and friend of the channel, Bill Lord Such, has sent me something to look at. You can check out his channel below. In the box though, before I can get to the work, I've found lots of lovely goodies. Thanks, Bill. What do we have here? Oh look, a robot. That looks like so much fun. On top of that, he's also sent me a lot of retro sweets. All the stuff from my childhood, and the reason that I don't have any teeth left. Wake me up before you go-go. And when we open up the actual piece, it's a Commodore Amiga A501 Half a Meg expansion. These expanded Half a Meg Amigas in the early 90s, so we could play more complicated games. They also had a real-time clock installed, which had a battery which could leak and destroy the circuit board. Now, Vil doesn't have the tools to open one of these up and check, so I said I'd do it for him and show you in the meantime. Let's power up a desoldering gun. Opening these expansions in theory is very simple, but you do need tools that can get very, very hot and maintain that heat. Otherwise, the metal shielding will wick away all of the power from your iron. If the tabs are being stubborn, they can require a little bit of brute force. The other joints come away a lot more simply. Once we're inside, we need to pry the board up off of the tabs. I'm being careful here because I don't know what's going to greet me on the other side of the board. Hopefully not a leaky mess. And that doesn't look too bad. In fact, I've seen far, far worse. Obviously this one has leaked, but it looks like any damage is restricted to the location of the battery. And it doesn't look like any important tracks have been taken out. Let's remove this battery. Now the points we need to desolder are here and here. I'm not going to use the desoldering gun for this one. I'm just going to heat the joint as I pull on the battery. That one's free. And now let's do the other leg. And now the Vata of Death is free of the board. We can look at the culprit. That's actually alkaline. PC batteries usually leak alkaline, although you would have heard the term battery acid, and indeed it is corrosive. As you can see, there is some slight damage to the board, but I don't think anything that will affect operation. We're not going to replace the battery, so it doesn't matter. What I like to use is spirit vinegar. This is 5%, and you're going to see what happens when we put a small blob of vinegar onto the board. That fizzing is the acid of the vinegar reacting to the alkaline leakage of the battery. It's kind of embedded into the board, so what I do is I wait until the fizzing stops. I'm using a very soft, cheap toothbrush here to get in between all the nooks and crannies. It's still fizzing away. Once the vinegar stops reacting with the alkaline leakage, it's a good sign that the board will be roughly pH neutral. At that point, we'll need to clean the board to stop it getting too acidic and being corroded by the vinegar itself. I use isopropyl alcohol. It's really great for cleaning off the board. You need to be fairly gentle here because if any track were to be damaged, now would be the time. This is cleaning up really well. Looks like Vill Lord Such's Amiga expansion has really dodged a bullet here. This could be so much worse. All the chips seem fine with none of the bluey green fleck you'd expect to see from airborne leakage and the connector looks fine too. 
IPA naturally evaporates quickly, but for the sake of expediency, we're going to dry this off with a cotton bud. After cleaning, we can see there's some really deep damage to the top layer of the board. Luckily, this red capacitor goes right through the board and it's connected to the ground plane, so that's not an issue. Some engineers would lacquer the damage on the top side of the board now, but I'm quite confident that we've neutralized the alkaline and it's going to be stable from now on, so let's pop it back into the case. Not forgetting the insulating shield. And then the bottom of the RF shield. All we need to do now is tag this back in with some solder. I really ramped up the temperature on my soldering iron to make sure this took around 400 degrees centigrade. And with that, it's done. Time to test the expansion. And for that, we're going to use our Stunt Amiga 500. As you can see, our freshly bathed A501 expansion is installed. Sysinfo is reporting that our A500 has one megabyte of RAM instead of the base 512K it shipped with. Numbers are all well and good, but what about a real world test? Well, I've got this gaggle of early 90s cover discs. By 1992, a lot of premium titles needed one megabyte as a minimum. These demos are no different. Let's start with the one mega only cannon fodder demo from Sensible Software. War has never been so much fun. I really enjoyed this game back in the day. It actually seemed really expansive. And it's still good fun today. Eat my lead! Regular viewers of the channel will be quite aware that I suck at games and I very very quickly died on level 2 of the demo. Next let's try Super Frog. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No it's an exclusive level from Team 17's ill-fated mascot. I'm using a joystick here and to be honest I'm more of a pad guy but even so I feel that this probably would be quite difficult to control. Maybe my joystick's rubbish, who knows but they do say that a bad workman always blames his tools. Ah, I'm doing better now, I've got the hang of it. And just jump over this flaming lake no problem. Look at me go. Stupid joystick. Moving swiftly on, let's try Soccer Kid. I've never played this so I'm really curious actually. Okay, um, that does jumping, that does... Okay, where's my ball gone? Ah! Okay. An egg, do I collect? No, kick it in the face. What's this? Oh, seafood, don't like seafood. Another egg. Yep, kick it in the face. Oh, I'm really getting the hang of this. I think I'm finally a gamer. Where now? I think we're at the beach. Yep, more seafood. Where did my ball go? Ow! Ow! 
Ow. Oh, goodness. Kick them in the fa- Kick them in the face. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. That's quite enough of that. Well, 3 nil to us. It's all working flawlessly, so this can now go back to Villord Such. He's just got his first ever Amiga, so he's in for a lot of fun times ahead. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please do subscribe to get your fix, and I'll see you all in the next exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff.